Now, for more on 5G networks, I'm joined by Elizabeth Wojcicki. She is a freelance business and technology reporter. Elizabeth, thanks very much for joining us. Appreciate it. Now, Hong Kong's story was great. It was very entertaining. But let's talk about these dramatic changes that 5G platform can and will bring to places like the Shanghai Rail Station. What will that mean to passengers, commuters, who will have this power to, as he just pointed out, download a high-definition two-gig movie in as few as 20 seconds? Right. So. Um as that, as that report mentioned, immersive entertainment is going to be uh, one of the benefits of 5G. So talking about those fast downloads of um, high definition films. But there are also um, another sort of big benefit of 5G is going to be what the industry calls highly reliable real time services. So that means that the processing delays will be um, much reduced. And I would think that in a place like uh, a very busy train station, that that would be extremely, um, extremely beneficial for the operations of the train station as well. Elizabeth, clearly the race is on, not just in China, but globally, to be the first 5G platform. Explain what's mm -hmm. at stake. I read a quote that future rail stations mm -hmm. will be more intelligent, we saw those robots, than China ever imagined. Now, this is important because China is doing all this as, in essence, a trial run before going fully commercially, hopefully, by 2020. Right. So another of the, um, the major use cases of 5G is what is called the Internet of Things. In this case, it would be a very massive Internet of Things. So 5G is, has been designed to enable very energy efficient connections to things that have never been online before, um, factory equipment, uh, traffic lights, and that would include infrastructure within a train station. And so I think um, this ability to connect things that have never been online before means that you can collect massive amounts of data and then the presumption is that you would analyze them, analyze that information and figure out uh, what benefits you could deliver by knowing that much more about your operations, your customers, etc. Obviously you cover this industry day in and day out. So much is made about who's the front runner in 5G right now, <laughs> China or the United States. Take into consideration right. by 2025, China is going to have what, 576 million 5G users, which would be roughly 40% of the world market. Yes, it's a, it's a very nuanced question, I have to say, who is ahead because there are different ways that people define what 5G is and there are also different ways that people talk about being quote unquote first in 5G. So I just think um, it's important to note, for example, some people talk about being first as meaning who was first to launch a commercial service, but sometimes people are talking more about um, broad geographical distribution. So for example, which country would be first to cover its major urban centers in 5G? And actually, when we're talking about the former, probably people would say the U.S. is ahead because Verizon um, launched its launched a service that it describes as 5G last October, mm. and then AT&T followed uh, in December. But then, if you talk about um, sort of broad coverage across the country, um, a lot of analysts and experts think that China um, has an advantage there because of how sort of uh, organized and orchestrated the industry is and these kind of rollouts can be in China. Elizabeth, I hope this question isn't too outside of your comfort zone, but it's being widely reported that the UK has determined any potential risk from using Huawei equipment is manageable. Two things. What is that going to mean globally to the company? And is it also seen as a setback, if you will, for the Trump administration in its efforts to urge US allies from using Huawei's 5G telecom? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So the UK has sort of had that stance, I guess, for, um, in a sense, for some years, because I believe it was in 2010 or so that they started, um, that there has been this kind of center for uh, UK authorities to check Huawei equipment. Um, and I guess, right, the UK reaffirmed that that um, is a direction they think they can, they can move forward with. So I would think that, I mean, the UK is a very important mobile market. Um, I would yeah. say, um, you know, Right now, the leaders in 5G are probably the US, China, and South Korea, not necessarily in that order. But right after that would be the UK and other um, European countries. And so I do think, um, yeah, the UK is an important, it's certainly an important mobile market. And there are very, um, very powerful, influential mobile operators that are based there, like Vodafone. Um, in terms of what that means for the Trump administration, um, you know, they, I think they will go their own ways. I mean, Mike, Mike Pence, Vice President Mike Pence, just After made very Munich, recent remarks so, yeah. on that. Exactly, exactly. Okay, Elizabeth Wicke, we really appreciate your insight. Thanks very much for putting it into focus for us. Greatly appreciate it.